everybody, it's Jeremy. Welcome back to EA Tetragrammaton, where we are playing Ur. This is turn 93. Let's jump into things. Alright, so we got a couple things going on here. Uh, we have completed Enchantment 9. Cool. This gets us a couple of different things. Um, we'll talk about that more in just a second. Um, we've done some more Summon of Kusrikus. Great. We've got another Curse of Blood. Cool. Fantastic. We've got a couple of horror attacks. Gudu58, one of our Kusariku uh, summoners, was attacked by some Mantis horrors. I know I had made that comment like two or three turns ago where it's like, these guys keep doing this and they're never getting attacked. And now they're just getting attacked. Like one of them is getting attacked every single turn. But again, they're getting attacked by low numbers of lesser horrors. So, you know, don't get me wrong. Uh, Mantis horrors are very killy. They get a bunch of attacks, but... Ooh, fucking chunk boy coming. All right, very cool, very cool. All right, moving on. We survive. We have gained um, 11 good blood sacrifices in Tessaphon. Slowly but surely, we are trying to increase our capabilities as far as our blood economy goes. Probably never going to... We're probably far too late in the game for it to ever make too much of a difference. But we'll see how it goes. Uh, Gala 36, random Gala, was attacked by a Gortide Horror. Um, no chance that, that this bay is going to survive. Barkskin. Oh. oh, she did. She real dead. She real dead. All right, and we get to witness, uh, or we are attacked in Bakar as, um, yeah, just a small amount of Atavi chieftains coming our way are these actually like all yeah these are all leaders <laughs> that's funny well Micklin is uh, making use with with what he has basically all right cool so we lose Bakar we've got an unexpected event in Hall Woods where we've got a hurricane um unexpected event in Pangea misfortune and unrest unfortunately more disease in Troll Peaks. Still haven't been able to knock that out. Um, we have discovered an enemy in Delka. Okay. Able to patrol that out. Great. Construction of the City Palisades in Javalkish is completed. Cool. And then we did some patrolling. Great. Fantastic. What are we doing this turn? Um, most of what we're doing is a continuation of uh, the last several turns. We are continuing to recruit everywhere. Our income is almost up to 7k. Pretty crazy. We're um, we're making about three three and a half k um, every turn of spendable income, which is kind of dope. We are we are building up armies all over the place. Massive army in trackless waste, protecting our northeastern border, specifically protecting Javal Kish. We're building, uh, we're starting on a walled city in Javal Kish. We're also sending some reinforcements across the river to Javal Kish. Um, we're going to send some um, forces there to patrol it out. Uh, we're also going to send a couple of different mages there in order to just do base site searches there, just to see if we luck out and find anything. Uh, that would be pretty cool. We've already got three magic sites, or two magic sites, along with the throne. So we'll see if we can find anything else. Could be neat. But we're also trying to patrol uh, patrol it down and just get it to where we can, um, you know, recruit stuff if need be. Uh, there's not a lot of supplies here in Javalkish. So what we might do is we might recruit... Um, we might recruit. We might make it another uh, gala location where we recruit galas basically every turn, just so that we have a scenario like here in Koenberg, where where the supplies um, used in Koenberg are so reduced because just of the amount of uh, galas that we have here. Um, so we might do that as kind of like an additional aside, um, but um, I don't know. We'll see. There are, we've got options. We are continuing to move reinforcements over towards the west, towards Pangea. 
while at the same time we are starting to we're holding a lot of units in Ur for the express purpose of um, developing an army that's going to be protecting our heartlands. Just in case things go south with Lanka in the near future, we want to be able to... We, we don't want to have big army in northeast, big army in the west, big army in the southwest, um, and then nothing in our heartlands. Uh, we are still continuing to reinforce Silver Fangs. Um, we're actually getting to the point to where we have a sizable standing force there, but we don't have a lot of mages there yet. Um, but that's okay. We'll we'll get there. Um, we are continuing to forge. You might see we've got a lot of our endless bags of wine missing this time around. We're going to keep forging that. We're going to add some more boots to the messenger. These galas I'm basically using as sacrifices if if we are successful with them we are successful um if they get caught by the astral corruption they get caught by the astral corruption is what it is um so hopefully they do not fingers crossed and um the big thing for this turn is is that we are marching so we are marching in full force from carry on into Gaeta. um as well as from Pangea. So let's talk about two of the big things with Enchantment 9. We, we've touched base on these already, but two big things that we get from Enchantment 9 is one, Gaia's Blessing. Okay, So Gaia's Blessing is going to take the uncertainty of other scenarios, um, having to do things like... Uh, Warriors of Niflheim, or Frostfin, or Ground Army, or um, Serpent's Blessing, yada yada yada. Um, it, it dispense with all of that. We've got one. Um, we've got a a Inkidu Shaman, right? Who is just gonna out of the gate cast Guy's Blessing. We're gonna have fire, cold, shock resistance, and poison resistance on everyone. Done. Easy peasy. Okay? Great. That is nice. That is that is honestly nice. That's a that's a good boon for us. Other thing is demon cleansing. Alright, so um battlefield enchantment, 200 casting time, so this is gonna take two turns to cast. And it is while this enchantment is active, all demons take double damage from all attacks. Great. Fantastic. That is going to be massive. Not only for uh, Lanka, which is the person that I spoke about previously when talking about this. Um, I said it in that way because I was hoping that we weren't going to have to use it for Icklin. But Ozolotls are demons as well, right? So um, we're, we're going to take a look at this here in a second. Not much happened this turn with Hinam and Micklin. Right, there weren't any big battles that we could witness, uh, as far as I'm aware, which means it, it's gonna. I think if we leave it to Nicklin, I or if we leave it to Hinnom, I think Hinnom will slowly but surely take Nicklin down. But I think it's gonna take some time. <laughs> And I kind of, I kind of don't want to wait. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of playing passively. I'm tired of, of, of inaction. I, I'm, I'm to that point to where I'm having people forge things and cast things. Anyways, we're back to where I'm going to start losing a lot of people to astral corruption. I just, I want Micklin dead and gone, so that Relay, Lanka, Hinam, and I can just duke it out, finish the game, and be, be done. With it. I'm tired of Micklin. I'm tired of Astral Corruption. So, um, Demon Cleansing will give us uh, a lot of extra oomph against um, against Micklin and their Ozolotls specifically, um, but also any of their Demon Lords. So, that's a big deal. Um, taking dumb and double damage from all attacks is um, very, very powerful. And we can cast this right out of the gate very easily with most of our NCs. If we take a look at our NCs, they all start at Water 2. Um, and 
I say most, I guess. 25% of them will be water three. We have a fair number of these or have had a fair number of these. We've got one already, NC10 over here. And all it takes is, and we don't even need all of this gear to do it. We can do it with an NC, I think. Actually, I don't think we even need an NC. I think we can just do it with an Ishib and a water bracelet. Right? It just takes more gems if we're doing that way, right? Um, and they're going to have more fatigue, etc., etc., et right? So if we put a Robe of the Sea and a Water Bracelet on a Water 3 NC, then they can cast it out of the gate without any additional fatigue or any gem, additional gems, etc. So this is very easy for us to cast uh, to put up. So we are doing that. We are also... Um, the way we are setting up this particular army is is to fight Ozolotls. So most of our forces from Carry On, for example, are set to Bodyguard, right? The goal being is that we want um, a pretty big ma a pretty big force to be protected by Bodyguards. Um, but we will also have a, a large-ish, and we're probably actually going to take some of those bodyguards off. Um, because part of the problem is if you, if you have, if you bunch up commanders, right, and then you have just soldiers around them in a block, the commanders will typically hold their position where you put them, and the soldiers will fill in around them. Great. If you have a commander with bodyguards, and you have them all stocked on, stacked on top of each other, then they'll get pushed out because their bodyguards have to stay next to them as well, right? Um, and sometimes it gets janky. Sometimes they pushes the bodyguards to the side. Some, it's, it's a little weird, right? So we might have too many people on bodyguard. We might need to pull some of them off, etc. Because we basically want to create a, a four section of our commanders and then bodyguard or, or infantry all around them. Um, it's just the bodyguards aren't going to move, whereas the other non-bodyguard infantry will eventually move to attack. So we, that's where we do the hold and attack command. The goal being is is right, we want a whole bunch of infantry, and then the ozolotls go up. Sorry about that. The ozolotls go up. They come down. They surround us, but we're in a defensive square, basically. Uh, something like demon cleansing goes up, um, and boom, we we win via that scenario. Another thing, right, uh, we talked about this previously, is that we were waiting on a lot of our buffs. We were relying on the communion for a lot of our buffs. We are getting away from a lot of that, right? Um, so Army of Lead was something that we already had on not a communion. Uh, we're putting that on a Earth uh, an Enkidu Shaman because we don't want to rely on the Tartar Tartarian the Tartarian might go crazy and not be available for us to move, right? So we don't want to rely on that. We've got Army of Lead going there. We've got Storm on a um, being cast immediately by a Gudu, right? Just with extra gems. Um, we've got things like Mass Regeneration is getting uh, cast by a uh, an Enkidu Shaman. Uh, again, immediately just with extra gems, right? Um, we've got things like all of our, all of our, um, defensive buffs, Gaia's Blessing, right? That's just going off, um, immediately, not, not through the communion. The only thing coming out of the communion that is a buff, right, um, is gonna be Fog Warriors, right? Because we don't have a great way to do that alternatively. Um, and we are gonna be trying to put up, uh, relief via the communion. Um, and we might do a couple of other things, but those are the big ones, right? Um, Fog Warriors and Relief are the, the big ones. Another thing, so that's a big deal, right? Getting, getting more of our buffs up immediately rather than later on in the fight via the Communion is a big deal. Another big deal is, is we are going to be summoning far more than we did previously. Um, so using a lot more things like uh, living earth, um, living air, we are still doing a lot of just base summon water elementals, right? Um, but we're doing a lot of living earth and living air to add into the mix. Now, granted, 
taking something like Living Air, for example, Mictlin has shock resistance in his Bless. So there, it's less likely that something like Living Air is going to do a lot of damage, per se, to his units, to his um, Ozolotls, for example, or even to any of his base sacreds, like his Jaguar, war Jaguar Warriors or anything like that. But one of the things is, is I don't know that he has a great way to deal with flyers in his backline. And if we get flyers, if we get a whole bunch of air elementals, even if they're not killing his mages, right, or his uh, infantry, they'll kill the shit out of some blood slaves, right? So we send them in, they start trampling around in the background, um, causing issues, and hopefully that's going to help alter things for us, right? Um, more water elementals means more, uh, more multiple crushing attacks, etc., etc., which is pretty useful. Um, some living earth is going to give us more trample and more beef, right? I think that's another uh, scenario that's going to be helpful for us. Um, and then we have our normal tricks, right? We have our uh, mass thunder strikes. We have our mass, um, you know, blade winds and things like that, etc., et etc. Et now, what we do not have added into the mix, which we might end up trying to do with Promna, with our Tartarian over here, if she gets uncrazy, is we might end up um, outfitting her as kind of a thug. Um, and going from there. We're probably not going to worry about doing that this turn, but we might put some... I say that. Maybe we'll go We'll go about that here in just a second. We'll, we'll select some people to put some uh, gear on her. Probably put some, like, flying boots or, or things like that. Um, some basic, other basic gear. Um, what do we have? We put... Magic things. Do we have anything that's anti... Not really. I was going to say, do we have anything that's anti-demon? We could look for that. Um, hmm. Forge, isn't that, uh, that fire, I think? Yeah, the Holy Scourge, right? You know, three times versus undead or demons. I wonder if there's like a higher level version of that. The Star of Thraldom. False fetters. So we could do something like um, a Holy Scourge. That would be better against um, demons or something like that. Uh, that would be pretty cool. Um, you know what? Fuck it. We'll do it. Um, rather than just saying things like, Ooh, this thing would be cool. Well, let's just build some stuff. We'll put some uh, winged shoes on her. So that she can fly, she'll need um, she'll need a helmet and some body armor. So what do we have? What are we willing to lose, basically? Um, Helmet-wise, uh, we can't do an iron face. We could do armor of the knights really easily. Be pretty pretty cool. Okay. Um, we could do. Chainmail of dis Displacement really easily. Sure. Do that. Um, what about options? We'll need... We'll want, like, some uh, regeneration, right? So let's just grab an Esham and do a re... Oh, you can't do regeneration on um, Tartarian, can you? Yeah, they're undead, so that won't... So we won't, we won't be doing that. Um, we would want, what else do we have? Girdle of Might for reinvigoration, that would be pretty good. Just smash some things, that'd be nice. That only cause, we, yeah, we don't have to do that with a, an, or an Inkidu Shaman, we can do that with a Gudu. Um, and then, what was that? Uh, a Bracers of Protection, yeah, those would be good. So, what we're looking at, um... Looking at a Holy Scourge with Chainmail of Displacement, Bracers of Protection, Girdle of Might, Flying Boots, um, 
uh, armor of knights. We can have her do um, iron skin, temper flesh. Um, we could give her a. We could give her a death gem or a couple death gems, and she could do something like soul vortex pretty easily, right? Um, so that she can drain things there. That would be pretty cool. Um, I don't think we'd even need anything else, truth be told. Uh -huh. We could potentially get up to Fields of the Dead. On Well, I've already talked about that, but but that's that's going to take like a lot of stuff. Like That would be multiple boosters to try to like get up to the point to where we cast that. I guess actually it might only take like one booster because it was a five so if we got her to a three and it only cost one we could put three gems on her and then do fields of the dead that would be interesting actually that'd be really interesting We could like steal a uh we could steal a skull staff. Good. What if I forged another skull staff? Just did that. We lose plague stink, we lose plague stink, whatever. That's cool. Okay, sorry, I got distracted. I'm doing random shit. So, so we might send out Kromna. So, so the the point that I was trying to make is 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 we've made adjustments, right? We we should be a little bit better off as far as our um, army composition goes and what we're doing, etc. Um, but one of the issues that we have is is we don't have any um, good thugs or any good um, super combatants to cause havoc or add other wind conditions right so so it's a matter of having multiple wind conditions in these big late game battles etc um, but sending in a tartarian right that can put massive um, protection buffs on themselves and with um with something like with something like earth power and um the uh, reinvigoration belt the girdle of, of might um She'll have good, uh, good reinvigoration, so hopefully she won't fatigue out. And then she should be super high protection with iron skin, temper flesh. Uh, she should be resisting so many, so much damage, basically. Oh wait, why did I make a chainmail of displacement? That was dumb. Um, thank you. It clicked. I was like, something is not right here. That's not to say, like, a chain mill of displacement wouldn't be good, but there's no point to be doing a chain mill of displacement if you're doing a girdle or a armor of knights. Where did I do that? No idea where I did this shit. This is why I try to have, like, fucking specific locations where I do the vast majority of my uh, forging. I might end up just leaving the, the chain mill of displacement. Yeah, fuck it. We'll leave the chain mill of displacement. We were looking for another helmet. That's the thing. We wanted a helmet. Um, because we don't really have good helmet options. We could put a uh, horror helm. Actually. That's definitely something we could do. Uh, what about water? Is there any good water helmet? Ooh. A uh, horned helmet would be good because additional additional attacks, right? Those are always nice to help uh, to help clear chaff. Yeah, a horned helmet I think would be good. All right, we'll do that. Cool. Okay. Um. So, uh, adding in something like a super combatant, uh, preferably I would want like three or four of these. Um, uh, three or four super combatants or thugs to be able to add additional wind conditions, um, deal with other big enemies, etc. Uh, we are bringing in more um, more reinforcements for the communion. Um, so that should get added into the mix as well. Um, 
and I think that's mostly it for exciting stuff for the turn. Um, truth be told, we've got two, three more turns before our god revives. Um, that's it. That's 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 pretty much it. It's, uh, that's uh, how the thing do. This is how the thing. Do. So you know that's uh, that's about it. Oh, also, um, these this army as it goes out is going to be supply neutral. So, because I'm not I'm not risking the like walking into a territory. So we're bringing we're bringing enough bags of wine uh, all partitioned out. Um, we might actually bring a couple extras just in case something bad happens and we lose some. Um, but yeah, so that should be that should be it. Fingers crossed. Man, this could be a, this could be a global war on a global scale at this point. I hate astral corruption so much. I hate it so so much. It's such a pain in my ass. Oh god, god. Oh fuck. All right, that's gonna be it for the turn. Thanks for watching. I will see you all next time. Bye, everybody.